Well, happy Boxing Day, and welcome back to Just Chatting. And this is the series of videos that we do on Thursday and Sunday evenings just for our own entertainment. And what we're going to do this evening is something a little different from the sort of things we've done in the past. We are going to talk about how to protect yourself from the cyber bullies known as the Sussex Squad. So why is this important? Well, because these are people who are actively and in concert with one another, bullying people off social media platforms. They are attempting to have people's YouTube channels, their Twitter accounts, their Facebook accounts shut down. And it's for no other reason than that not everybody happens to agree with them that Nutmeg and her sock puppet are God's gift to the universe. It's just that simple. And there are a number of YouTubers out there who have documented some of the outrageous comments these people have left on other people's social media accounts, things like this. Uh, and I think we're all aware of the actions they have taken to shut down or attempt to shut down free speech on the internet. What I want to make sure you know is whether or not your speech is protected. In other words, are you breaking the law? Are you violating someone's rights? Are you opening yourself up to a civil suit? And, of course, obviously, how to say what you want to say while staying within the guidelines. All right, when we come back. Okay, first things first, here's my disclaimer, and I'm actually going to run it right across the bottom of the screen while I'm talking. I am not an attorney. This is not legal advice. Very simple, but the reason I'm going to run it across the screen is I don't want you to lose sight of that. All right, let's start with a couple of definitions. And the reason I feel these definitions are important is because we just went through, um, a few days ago, in fact, uh, the story of how one YouTuber who has a channel that is not kind to Nutmeg, let's just put it that way, and this person was publicly in the mainstream media called a troll and a hater. So I think we need to look at what those words actually mean. We're looking at dictionary definitions, not what Christopher Boozy and company happen to think these words mean. Um, you don't get to just make up your own meanings and run with it, but frankly, it looks like these people have. So let's start with hate speech. Uh, hate speech is speech or, or written comments, I'm not using speech, but it could be written comments, uh, that are of, a, um, they're prejudiced against a person based on things like race, sex, sexual orientation, religion, you know the drill. Um, they are um, attacks on a person based on a group they belong to. Hate speech in the U.S. is not, for example, I can't stand my sister-in-law. Well, you and I might think that's hate speech, but a court doesn't think so. On the other hand, if I were to say, I can't stand my sister-in-law because she's Jewish, bang, hate speech right then and there. Now, if you're engaging in hate speech and you want to figure out how to get away with it, walk away from this channel right now, because I'm not going to help you. 
Hate speech is bad. It's harmful for all of us as a society, not just the individuals or groups that it targets. And you're not going to find a warm, fuzzy home here if that's what you're about. However, saying, I don't like Nutmeg for her sock puppet, it's not hate speech. When people say that making videos critical of Nutmeg and Ginger is hate, no, it's not. They're abusing the definition. They are redefining it uh, according to their own personal definition. You know, whatever way the windmill in their head is blowing today. No. When people are publicly characterized in mainstream media, this was an article in Newsweek magazine, as haters based on the fact that a small group of people with a special interest, which is protecting Nutmeg and Ginger from legitimate criticism, are in fact labeling legitimate criticism as hate speech. We all need to sit up and take notice because none of us can afford to have that definition blurred. Okay. So what else did they say about this particular YouTuber? Uh, they called her a troll. Now, a troll, an internet troll, this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about, you know, the ogre living under the bridge or whatever, because there are no real trolls in real life. Internet trolls are people who go to other people's, here, this is key, other people's forums and post comments that are inflammatory, that are designed to elicit uh, a response, an emotional response, and disrupt the, uh, the flow of communication on this particular platform. So, unless this YouTuber was off blasting comments left, right, and sideways on platforms that were pro-nutmeg, I'm not sure how they figured she was a troll. And the reason this is an important definition is I cannot be called uh, a nutmeg troll because I'm not posting on anybody's social media accounts. I don't even have, no, I'm sorry, I do. I have a Facebook account that I don't know how to use, to be perfectly honest with you. Other than that, now I'm not on Twitter. I'm not on Instagram. I That Facebook account, as I say, I don't know how to use it. I have to send someone an email saying, help me out with this. Seriously. Um, social media is not my thing. And even though I do watch videos on YouTube, I rarely, rarely comment. And usually when I comment, it's only in support of the person who has made the video. I don't go to people's videos and leave negative comments about them. That's crazy. I mean, if I don't like what's on YouTube, I I'll change channels just as I would if I were dealing with a television set. So the reason this is an important distinction is if you are here watching my channel, you've made a choice. If I'm posting to your videos or somebody else's Facebook page, they haven't made a choice. I'm making the choice, you see? And it's really all about, are you there out of choice? So if you're a troll, it's because you are elected to go over to someone else's platform and leave negative comments. If you have your own platform and you're throwing out content that people can only access if they are choosing to access it, how could you be called a troll? You don't meet the basic definition. So having said that, that is the issue that affected um, the 
YouTuber who was, as I say, she was slammed. Um, and the fact is, it was an unjust slamming. Because even though I cannot say she's not a troll, I don't know. There was nothing in the article to indicate she was exhibiting troll behaviors. Also, hate speech. At no point did I see anything indicating she had ever published a video saying, I don't like Megan because she's a person of mixed race. That would be hate speech. She said, I think she's a controlling, manipulative liar. Like, okay, fine. Not pleasant, not hate speech. You have to keep that in mind. All right. Now we're going to talk about defamation. And this is also sometimes referred to as defamation of character. And we have two kinds of defamation here in the U.S. And then two classes of victims of defamation. So let's start with the two kinds of defamation. We have slander and we have libel. Slander is the spoken word. Um, libel is written. However, things like YouTube are both slander and libel. It's slander because I'm speaking. Um, you are, this is an oral presentation. It's not in writing. I'm not doing this on a platform like Twitter where you write. Um, no, uh, I'm not doing this with text. So there's your slander element. But because it is permanent and it has that element of being presented, being reproduced, being available as verbatim, as I'm saying it, to the general public. That dissemination is also libel. So, now, mind you, of course, I have to actually commit the act of, de of defamation for it to be slander or libel. And we haven't gotten there yet. So this is one of the reasons that people find the distinction between slander and libel hard to tease apart today. The laws were written a long time ago. When the laws were written, slander meant I said something to someone else. Libel meant I wrote it down, disseminated it to someone else. And there was no crossover. There was no radio. There was no TV. There was no YouTube. Um, the closest they had was like a town crier. Um, by the way, that would have been slander because they did not consider um, the town crier to be written. So what we have now is technology that has sort of mutated the definitions a little. What you really need to be concerned with is not the format. In other words, spoken, written, on YouTube, with film, video, whatever. It's the content. And when we look at the content of your statement, the overriding consideration is is your statement false? It's, that's key. I can say it is a fact that Nutmeg is a liar. I can throw that out there. That is, there's nothing she can do about it. Because it is a fact. She has been caught red-handed lying the Archbishop of Canterbury basically called her a liar. She went on, uh, what was it? The, um, I guess it was a convention that they had filmed uh, when she was with Suits and told the entire audience, and mind you, this was filmed, so she told the entire world that she lied in order to get her union card. She went on Ellen DeGeneres. She said, as she was talking about scrambling around, getting in and out of the car, you know, that whole um, little 
my car door was broken story that was meant to make her seem like just folks, but I guess it was meant more to make her seem like Catherine Zeta-Jones, because that seems to be where she got the story from, a Catherine Zeta-Jones commercial years ago. She said openly, when people asked what I was doing, I didn't tell them what I was doing. I said I was in there to get a script or to get highlighters. The woman seems to think that if she smiles about it or laughs about it and treats it as a joke, that the lies are okay. It doesn't alter the fact that she's lied. She has openly admitted she has lied. She has been caught out on lies again and again. I can say with absolute certainty, it is a fact that this woman is a liar. There is nothing she can do about that. Because in terms of slander or libel, truth is an absolute defense. This is the first point you look for. Is the statement true? If the statement's true, anybody attempting to sue you for libel or slander has no case. They haven't even met the one fundamental point they must make, and that is that the defamatory statement must be false. It's not. Period. So, keep in mind, number one, for defamation, it must be a statement presented as fact, and it must be be false. So, how do we get around something like this? Well, I can say to you, for example, um, I think nutmeg comes from Zeta Reticuli. She is part of an alien invasion of the United States, and uh, she's on the vanguard, and she and her ginger sock puppet have killed 4,000 Orphans, I like orphans, and puppies, orphans and puppies, and buried them under the chicken coop at Montecito, and that's what I think. I'm not presenting it as a fact. And of course, it's not a fact. It's absolutely absurd. I do not believe Nutmeg has ever been to Zeta Reticuli in her entire life. So, is there anything anybody can do about a statement like that? Absolutely not. Now, there are YouTube channels, and I, I go over and watch a couple of them every now and then, who do parodies of Nutmeg and Ginger. You know, this guy flipping around the, the tendrils of the Nutmeg wig. Um, it's very entertaining. Parody. Parody is not defamation. So, can you make jokes? Yes. Can you give your opinion? Yes. Can you state facts? They need to be facts. Yes. What you can't do is you can't throw things out that are not factual and say, this happened. Um, you cannot say, um, oh, I don't know, to, well, Nutmeg Robbed Bank was the one that came to mind, but that seems a little egregious. Um, you can't say, for example, I know the reason Nutmeg left the United Kingdom was because she was caught having an affair with Prince Charles's doorman can't do that. That's not a fact. If you do something like this, mind you, your next door neighbor pretty much only has to prove that it's not true and that you, you had no reason to believe it was true and your next door neighbor 
could win a case, Nutmeg, as a public figure, needs to go a little further. She would need to prove that, well, it's not true, and that you knew it wasn't true, or that you could very easily have determined it wasn't true, or, for example, that there was clear evidence that it wasn't true, and you ignored it. It's a much higher level of proof she has to come up with. Now, when we start to talk about this, in addition to defamation, your statement has to be communicated to others, orally or in writing. Um, you have to show, at, at the very least, negligence. You have to have been negligent in putting this out. That, that would be the case with your next door neighbor. With nutmeg, they, the term they use is actual malice for a public figure. Much higher standard. She has to prove that you knew it wasn't so, or you, know, you should have known it wasn't so. And there have to be damages. Now, damages are interesting. That's something that, for our purposes, we shouldn't worry about because damages, a court can find you guilty, for example, of slander or libel. And, and mind you, this is a civil case. You don't go to jail. They make a financial award and they might determine that you were guilty and make an award of a single dollar because there were no damages or there were minimal damages or there were damages that just couldn't be substantiated. So damages is not something we want to be concerned with. We want to be concerned with the integrity of the statement. So what we need to look at is we can put out any statement that represents our opinion. If we throw it out as facts, you have to be able to back that up. Really, you do. Um, a lot of people throw things out there as facts without backing it up. I'm not sure that's such a good idea. But if you want to err on the side of caution, make sure you know it's true, that it's a fact that it's true. And if you can't prove that it's true, my suggestion is be sure to say, I think. Just like that, I think then you can say anything you want. It's my opinion. You can have any opinion you want because Nutmeg and Ginger have not stripped us of our right to free speech. Not yet. So, moving away from this and moving into the other area I wanted to touch on. That is, what do you do when you are victimized by these cyber bullies. Now, most of this is just common sense, but when people are under attack, they don't always bring their common sense to bear. They panic. They, they react. They want to defend themselves. They, they want to make it stop. Don't. If you are posting on social media, and someone attempts to bully you, um, to throw trash comments on your social media page or channel or whatever, it's your forum, they throw crap on you, document it. Take screenshots, document it. That's number one. You can take those screenshots you can go to the administrators of Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whoever, and give them this information and file a complaint against the person who is cyberbullying you. And believe me, I've seen some of the stuff that the Sussex Squad puts out there, and frankly, some of those accounts should have been shut down years ago. And... It is absolutely frightening because there are a lot of people on YouTube who have done work. I'm going to give you a link to one channel that
that just recently posted on this, they've done work showing that these are coordinated attacks. People don't like what somebody is saying about their beloved nutmeg, and they go on the offensive. These are organized, and they are designed to intimidate people off social media. It's wrong. We need to do something about it. So keep in mind, you want to document everything. Take your screenshots, throw them in a file, make sure you know you have the dates and whatnot on this. Save it. You don't have to act necessarily immediately. You don't even really need to act at all, but you want that information. I am suggesting to you that you should report it. Uh, you should always report any effort anyone makes to bully you, and this is bullying. In most cases, there's not a lot they can do other than go over and make troll comments on your site. I don't know if you can block them. I know I can block comments on my YouTube channel. So I assume you can lock people out of commenting on your Twitter pages or your Facebook pages. Um, as I say, I, I can do that on YouTube, I assume they will give you the same opportunity. Certainly, consider doing that because the point is you don't want to engage with these people. I and mean, frankly, they're nuts. You, What kind of conversation are you going to have with a crazy person? It's That's a waste of your time. So, no. Don't bother. Anyone who is disturbed enough to go over to somebody else's Facebook page and start trash-talking them because they don't like that other person's opinion. No, they don't deserve the time it would take you to reply to them. Just keep that in mind. Um, and I know a lot of you have written in over the past several months and it's this is something that shows up often in the comments where people will say, Sue, you're showing up on the social media, the Sussex Squad um, postings that list hate accounts, and your channel is one of them. I'm not worried. Please understand this. I am not worried. There is no action they can take against me. Not There's no legal action. They can't take me before the court and do anything that would get me in trouble with the law. And they cannot take civil action against me either. It's not there. They don't have a case. Um, and I don't think they're stupid enough to do anything like make false accusations in the mainstream media, that would be, oh my gosh, would that be stupid? Because I would sue. No question about it. And gee, I'm sorry, if the channel name doesn't tell you what's going on, you really need to rethink. I am hoping that the YouTuber who was recently dragged through the mud by Newsweek will sue. I, I hope she does that. Her decision, not mine. I would. Because these things need to be stopped. We cannot have our right of free expression hampered just because Our Lady of Montecito doesn't like it. All right. That's what I have to say to you today. Remember, the one takeaway I want you to, to get from this is, in my opinion, I think, and remember, that's how you preface your comments, okay? All right, on the way out, uh, just because Our Lady of Montecito just came to me, 
I think we're going to take a slideshow. I prepped for another video and watch that one on the way out, just as a little reminder of how wonderful Saint Nutmeg is and how lucky we all are to have her in our lives. Oh, by the way, point number two, sarcasm is really a useful tool. I will see you all later. Have a terrific day. You know I always want to hear from you in the comments. Tell me what you think. Tell me where you want me to go next, and we'll go there. All right, see you later.